G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, another impromptu video today about this ever-evolving Clayton Oliver situation. And I uh, obviously put up a video this morning by the time I'm uploading it on the, you know, the um, kind of bombshell story that Clayton Oliver was potentially going to get uh, moved out of Melbourne. But since I've uploaded the video, um, you know, we've got a little bit more context, a little bit more detail. It's starting to flood through a little bit. So I thought I'd add this as a little bit of a part two for the first video. So the first video was a little bit more me expressing a little bit of shock and outrage that uh, Melbourne were potentially willingly going to part ways with Clayton Oliver and the way that it read at the time of me making that video was more so that Melbourne were open to it to give their list a bit of a refresh and you know accumulate picks and that, that was the way it came across but uh, the the extra context I guess that we've gotten since uh, since I've read, made that video was that this has a little bit more to do with uh, the dynamic and the relationship between Oliver and Melbourne which has reportedly deteriorated a fair bit this season so it's not just a case of Melbourne wanting to be in creative with their, their list rebuild or revamp, if you will, um, to try to get on the front foot to get some draft picks. It's not really a case of that. It's actually more so to do with a potentially problematic Clayton Oliver. At least that's the way it's being reported. I'm going to stay relatively unbiased with this. I'm just going to try and report on the facts. There's been a lot of innuendo uh, about Clayton Oliver's behavior towards the end of the year. I won't speculate on that. It seems like it could be a bit of a delicate situation, but what I will say is that there is no doubt there is... Um, well, I feel like this is a bit of a no smoke without fire situation situation purely because of how broadly this is being reported on, how quickly the uh, situation seems to be developing. And, you know, specifically, we, we've already hit the point where uh, apparently uh, senior players at respective clubs have been consulted about the possibility of getting Clayton Oliver onto their team. And they've named a couple of suitors. Uh, specifically, Tom Morris says that Adelaide and Essendon have emerged as the first true contenders to get him. So this is a very quickly evolving situation, hence why I felt like doing a part two video. So quoting Fox Sports, this one says that the relationship between Oliver and Melbourne has the deteriorated this season, primarily of the handling of multiple injuries and the rehab process. So interestingly here, it seems like Melbourne and uh, Clayton Oliver have a bit of a disconnect about the way they about the way they perceive um, this situation as specifically, you know, Melbourne reportedly, this is all apparently information from insiders. There's no, there's no actual quotes, but there's a suggestion that Melbourne felt that Clayton Oliver was unprofessional in his rehab this year. And by contrast, there seems to be a belief in the Oliver camp that uh, Melbourne mishandled his injuries. This is a serious blow up. You know, I mean, when you consider Clayton Oliver is on a seven year, $7 million deal signed last year, I think if it wasn't last year, it was the year before. I'm pretty certain it was last year. We're one year into that. Um, and if this is true, Melbourne are willing to let go of that as is Clayton Oliver, obviously a club that he loved at the time of signing that contract. And this is a serious dust up and probably goes a little bit deeper than simply, oh, you mishandled my injury. Now there was even a suggestion and again this one is just rumor as well that's uh, an example of Clayton uh, mishandling his own injury was that his recovery was pushed back last year because he tried to tattoo his own foot and it got infected um, there seems to be a suggestion that that genuinely was what happened although I think it was reported at the time that it was a infection an infection on a blister on his heel or something like that. So this is a very murky situation, which at first I was full of skepticism, but the fact that this is evolving so quickly and uh, the stories are really starting to accelerate, sure, you could say the media is trying to ride the coattails of a very interesting story that's gonna generate clicks. Sure, you could say that, yet there is a lot of detail in here, um, both by Mitch Cleary and Tom Morris here, that makes me think there is genuinely something into this situation. So Mitch Cleary is reporting that um, that Melbourne teammates are aware Oliver would be open to a move to Adelaide. So, you know, that's a pretty progressed, um, you know, quote from Cleary there. As an aside here as well, I referenced, you know, how Clayton felt like his, uh, his injury was mishandled by the club. Well, he does actually go on to say in a previous quote to Seven News uh, that he didn't handle the injury the way he should have. So there is a little bit of an omission of guilt there, but Cleary goes as far as to report that uh, Melbourne are having a board meeting tonight or Wednesday night. Again, forgive me for the time zone difference where they're actually going to be discussing Clayton Oliver's future and list managers are already well aware of the possibility of a Clayton Oliver move and like I said to, the, to such an extent that they're actually consulting the leadership groups of their teams to say, you know, how would you feel about us recruiting Clayton Oliver? Can we make it work? So the, the two clubs that are reportedly interested, uh, according to, I think it's Tom Morris. Yes, Tom Morris is the one to uh, to name Adelaide and Essendon. So there's a link to Darren Burgess, who was the fitness boss at Melbourne, which is kind of an obscure link, I suppose. But at the same time, he is really well-renowned and reportedly has a great relationship with Clayton Oliver. Essendon, on the other hand, are another team that are just trying to 
to improve their list in the here and now under Brad Scott. Obviously, it's been a long time between, well, finals wins, but obviously, sparingly, they've made the finals and it's time to improve their list in the short term. There's always been talk about how they've had maybe a little bit of an undersized midfield. I mean, any team, any team's midfield right now would get improved by Clayton Oliver and Essendon uh, are feeling ambitious at the moment, coupled with the fact that they've got some salary cap. They're currently linked to Ben Mackay, Todd Goldstein, Jade Gresham, and now Clayton Oliver. This has the potential to be an enormous offseason for Essendon if they somehow make it all work. Similarly, the Crows, you know, their, their midfield is probably a little bit on the small side. Oliver certainly would add a point of difference in addition to the fact that he is probably a top 10 midfielder in the competition. You know what? Probably top 10 is probably selling him short. So to me, this situation is really fascinating. As I suggested, this isn't simply just a case of one injury went the wrong way and Clayton Oliver was unhappy about the way it was handled and, and you know, Melbourne just thinking that he was a little bit unprofessional in his rehab. That doesn't quite explain what's going on here. There is something deeper. And to be honest, even in the comment section of the last video, I, um, a couple of people sort of added a little bit of context. I'm not going to probably speculate on that too much because it does sound sensitive, as I said before, and I, I really don't know what I'm talking about. I would just be passing on rumor. But if there's a mental health element to this, it would start to make a little bit more sense. Uh, you just hope that Clayton Oliver ends up, whether it be Melbourne or somewhere else, at a place where he can get his life back on track. But again, I don't want to speculate on stuff I don't know about. This could be a potentially devastating move for Melbourne. Um, you know, it, it could be one of those things where it actually ends up better for them. You know, when Collingwood shed a bunch of players at the end of 21 or 20, I think it was at the end of 20, myself and others probably thought they were consigning themselves to a, um, you know, a lower half of the ladder finish for a number of years while they regenerated. And that was true. In 21, they fell to the bottom two or something like that, wasn't the bottom two. And sure enough, they premiers two years later. So it doesn't really spell the end for Melbourne as such, but I do feel like losing one of your absolute best midfielders is a pretty devastating blow in the context of your premiership window, particularly if they don't replace it with uh, mature players. You know, their forward line is, um, you know, their Achilles heel. Their midfield is a genuine relative strength. To take Clayton Oliver out of that, I know they've got Viney and Petrarca, but Viney's going to be 30 next year. Even best case scenario, replace him with a Harley Reid type. You know, that's gonna, it's going to take a little bit of time. And by contrast, Essendon, this would be an enormous win for them, provided that Clayton Oliver is uh, motivated to play good football, uh, depending on what his situation actually is here. But, you know, after a number of years of taking, you know, relatively high draft picks, Sardis, Hobbs, they've uh, refreshed their midfield a little bit there. There's Perkins, there's Nick Cox. They've hit the draft. They can afford to trade out of it. So, you know, what's gonna what's it going to cost um, either of these clubs? Well, I think two first-rounders, is a minimum. The salary cap situation will be interesting. Um, there is a possibility because it's so much money, Melbourne will kick in a little bit of money uh, in exchange for you know better draft capital. That is possible. They're not obligated to do that, but it is possible that they do that. Adelaide have three picks in the top 25. Essendon have, uh, what, pick eight this year. That might get pushed back. So potentially a top 10 pick and a future first. If I'm Melbourne, I'd probably be looking at some mature players. And, and then you also consider the fact that Essendon and Adelaide may need to offload a few players to actually Actually accommodate this deal depending on exactly how the financials work and I will say as well you know Eagles fans watching this this probably does have a slight impact on our offseason hopes as well I'm not suggesting that Clayton Oliver wants to play for West Coast he is not crazy but you know if Melbourne really are assembling you know heaps of draft picks in this year's draft maybe they try and get Gold Coast pick four they're probably going to come hard for pick one this could change the the specifics of what kind of offer Melbourne could offer West Coast for pick one now I'm not saying that I actively want us to trade pick one I don't but suddenly if Melbourne are more equipped to formulate a decent offer for West Coast this could impact what we do with pick one and it may be a situation that benefits us where we have you know a whole heap of uh, first round draft picks that we didn't think was possible before again there's a lot to play out here and uh, I'm not saying that will definitely impact us but as Eagles fans I would keep an eye on this story anyway guys that's just my thoughts and a bit of an update so yeah to clarify and to to summarize this video just a bit of extra context as to this uh, this Clayton of a story that it is developing and probably will continue to develop. I am going down to London tomorrow and so frustratingly I won't be able to report on it too much in real time but I'll be watching it like a hawk so uh, yeah appreciate all the support on the channel and I'll see you in the next video guys whatever video that may be. We'll see if there's a crazy trade story to bob up before I go, and go down to London but appreciate you all and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.